Okay, let's talk about. We don't have proper lighting, so I'm having to use my head worn lamp for this until somebody installs lights. Probably end up being me. Um, so, at any rate, let's talk about the uh, the monitor wedge, floor wedges, but might as well touch base on all the monitors at this point in time uh, with the church here. And I'm going to just use the input that we use for the PDA as well as the laptop as an example. This, whatever I talk about here, will also reflect in any of the other channels. Um, and I'll recap a few things from other previous videos while we're along the way on this. And hopefully, let me double check here. Let's make sure my hand is in there. Yeah, my hand's in there. Okay. So at any rate, once we've established using our PFL, a good input, and let me go ahead and start this uh, sound over here as an example. Uh, once we have established a, um, a reasonable signal using our PDA, I mean our PFL, and that one's just kind of like, oh, it's tickling to the yellows a couple times. There's a lot of fluctuation here, but it seems to be a reasonably good uh, signal. If, if it tickles into the red, which is uh, after the third yellow light over here, or if we also see up here is a condensed version. If we see it tickling the red, then we may want to back off the input for that, uh, which is this, this case a laptop, which is number two, stereo four. Uh, if you're using your PDA device, either back it off, preferably your, your device that you plug in, you have it at full strength and do your input gain adjustment at this point instead. Uh, but if by chance, uh, even uh, at full strength, and you end up having to try to get a good level, and you've got this thing, you got your input gain turned way down, that means you have a really strong output on your device, in which case go ahead and turn it down like to 75% and see if you can readjust at that point. At any rate, going on. We have changed now that we have both auxiliary 6 and auxiliary 5 are for our monitors, whether they be the one that's over top of the chandelier, which I will point to uh, shortly, uh, or auxiliary 5, which are the ports, either stage left and right up front or channel 8 for the time being. Later on, we'll, we'll, once I draw another cable back there, we will actually make an independent monitor send channel available out there, but for the time being, channel 8. Uh, back there on the back snake, which is uh, on the other far side of the wall there. And what happens once we have our established our good signal here, and of course we can, I would preferably my personal experience, bring the channel fader down to fairly low and then unmute it. And then we can actually bring up the main. Some big being in the universe or that's right now. I've got signal like coming out the main speakers. The that's the three speakers. That's the three speakers up above. Okay, so let's, let's, that's for the mains out, which is I had to sign to left and right for the time being for that. Uh, other than that, assignment groups one and two will be for the uh, the surrounding speakers all of them except for the choir area or praise band area, whichever, whatever you guys are calling it these days. Uh, those two small speakers up in the ceiling there. Uh, all the rest of them are going to be through uh, the ones on the channel here that says bells. So anyway, designating one and two, I'm going to put my balance in the middle. Yeah, when I was convinced that God is real, and God is really good, well, wouldn't I want to give my whole life to God? Wouldn't I want to give so as a result, Choir area right now. I have sound from this device. It could be any one of these. Depends on how we channel. Us. Do, we, do we do the channel assignments? It could be any channel. And trust me, you're going to have various ones turned at various adjustments for this. But if you got somebody that's in the back area that is um, singing and they don't need to be in those box uh, monitors above. Uh, such as if they were, um, if the, they have a floor wedge, there's no need to have them in the monitors up above. But you may want the, if there are people are sitting back there during the service, and you want them to be able to hear the sermon from the, uh, 
uh, from the lectern or whatever device that the, um, the uh, uh, reverend is, is speaking into, then you would want to go ahead and put them in so that they actually are coming out the speakers in the choir, um, choir area, <clears throat> as, as well as the bells area, which, is, which will actually be the rest of the speakers, but just those two hanging over the uh, choir area. Uh, and I will, of course, point those out to you when I go back to that area uh, here shortly. Um, let's see. That's fine. Let's see. We don't need to put them there because what we will do is assign this. We can actually assign this left and right to go out the mains once I take it out of mute mode. Uh, what do you do with it? So right now I have it coming out the mains as well as choir area. Well, what do I want to do about the bell, the rest of the uh, congregation that's sitting in the further areas? We go ahead and put it in there. Because it's assigned to, there's no need to put in three and four. Three and four are for a different destination, that's for recording. So none of these channels need to be in three and four unless you plan to record them. That's a, that'll be a separate video later. So at any rate. Now I took the assignments away. This, this channel is assigned nowhere. That's the reason why we're not hearing anything. We can still PFL it and look at the level up here as well as here. And this will always be active no matter what. You can always see what the input incoming signal is, make sure it's within a reasonable um, operating range. Um, so I will go ahead and put it back in the mains. To wonder about the very foundations of reality. But the problem with having it in the mains right now is we can't really tell what the rest of the uh, speakers are doing. So, of course, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. I'm going to go ahead and put it uh, in the, uh, into subgroup one or and two. Now what if I want this particular sound source, whether it be a microphone, whatever the device is coming to any one of these channels, what if I want it just to come in to all the other speakers but not the choir? Well, what do we got to do? We go ahead and assign it to assign subgroup one and two and we pan it over and as a result now this now whatever this signal source is is only coming in to the speakers other than the choir. See? It's coming in here, but not over here. If I pan it over this way, now it's just the, the two box speakers that are over the choir by panning it this way. Well, isn't that going to just uh, play with the sound and the other uh, if we want to come out the mains? No, not really. Because we, ha we also can assign it left and right, in which case it'll show up here left and right. Either left or right will feed into the mains. And there it is. And right now I have a panned left. I have a panned left, but I'm still getting out the mains. You can actually look upon this as four subgroups, two primary subgroups, whatever you want to call them, and of course the main output for the main speakers. Okay, so of course, any of these microphones hanging over the choir area, you may not want them to be in those small speakers that are up there. So what do we got to do? Instead of pan them straight up, we, yes, right, hopefully you guessed it right, pan them to the right. Pan them to the right. As well as these choir, these uh, bell speakers. The bell speakers will probably be the op, uh, they will be also, you will not want them necessarily. Well, that's a, that's a different situation since the, the bell area has its own set of microphones. And if you don't want those microphones to pick up what's coming through the, the box speakers, then you will assign them just left and right and leave, out, leave them out of the subgroup. But that, that's a different discussion another time. Getting back to what I was talking about before, the, this, the microphones that are hanging out in the praise group, choir area, whatever, you may be using them, like put one of them over top of the drummer and one over top of the uh, piano, but we don't want feedback, so we do not want that instrument coming through the speakers that are over there. I hope that makes sense. At any rate, now let's get back to the monitor. Now, of course, above, I was talking about earlier, we have uh, the little white speaker that's up there in the chandelier pointing down towards the lectern. That's our overhead monitor. Uh, we call it a um, various names for it, depending on what the application is. But down here is uh, the overhead monitor designated on the graphic EQ. So, auxiliary six control. This is our master auxiliary six. The output from that channel 
out of the board, goes down to the graphic EQ, and then on down uh, to the amplifier that, ampl that uh, amplifies that speaker that's hanging over the choir. Now the wedge monitors, that's a different situation, that's what we're going to get into now. Uh, before I do that, here's, here's number six. The more you know about the world, the more you know that. See, because I have everything else off right now. Now I do. Um, uh, yeah, and I go. least satisfied. That's the only thing I'm right now playing I, I do come is that overhead uh, monitor that's uh, up in the chandelier. Now comes the, uh, the next monitor. These are the four wedges, and I will show where those are going to be plugged in at. There's three locations, channel 8, and plus there are actually two monitor output ports along the stage up front. So any one of those, or the channel 8 for right now, uh, will actually be controlled or sent a fed a signal from auxiliary five. Well, so, you know, I, I wonder if there you go. It's doing damage to the people that we shut down that design. And that's what that, that's that one self-powered monitor back there uh, in the back. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go examine those in a minute just to show you that particular that aspect. What about the people that actually are on? Now this button also, of course, these auxiliaries have a selection between pre and post as well as five and six. We'll leave five and sixes be used as your monitors and set it so it takes its signal. Should it take it before the fader or after the, or uh, I mean, before the fader or after the fader. In other words, if it's after the fader, it means the signal will actually, if we bring the fader down, will decrease. It'll be actually uh, follow the fader, shall we say. Preferably no. In, in situations of monitors, we want to have an independent um, uh, mix of them. So we will have it pre. If I do a post, watch what happens. So here's auxiliary six, which is the overhead monitor. Uh, let me. Now that's it. And that opens up a whole. Oh, watch what happens when I bring this down. Right. It's, it's following a fader. But if I take it pre, uh, when I'm in the internet, Google view, watch it's no longer. <laughs> it's no longer following a fader. I can talk to people that know you and find out something. Sure. I need control. Now, of course, you're probably wondering, well, should I do that for all the channels? Eh, it's good to be able to do that. You should probably, for the most part, have all your auxiliary five and six, which are going to be used for independent monitors, mixes. You should go ahead and have them set for pre-fader. There are situations where you may want to go post-fader, but for what you're generally using this system for, go with pre-fader instead. If you go with post fader for any reason or, or, or anything like that, and you find that, uh, let's see if I have that set. See that uh, that uh, little monitor above the uh, pulpit is following this. I can actually, I can actually go ahead and, and take that gain and subtract it more or less here. It does. This still has some influence on it, but it's best. Make it independent, completely independent, instead of uh, shackled together with the, uh, the fader. Hope that makes sense. If not, um, just let me know and I'll explain it in another way. At any rate, let's go back now since we know that auxiliary five, six is for the speaker above, five is for the wedge monitors, and I will show you where you can plug them in. We can plug them in, like I said before, there's three different places that you can plug the wedge monitors in. So let's go over and take a look at that, which are controlled by auxiliary five. Why God would sometimes play coy if you want. And I'm right now, I'm right now, what I'm doing is I'm setting it up so that we only have a signal going down auxiliary five for the time being. And I've left the masters, of course, in case I didn't explain it before, all these auxiliary fives and sixes have, just like the main fader, they have a master output before it goes to the rest of the processing system and onto the speakers or amplifiers or whatnot. And this is right here. We're not using auxiliary four, three, or two for anything right now, so just leave them down. We do have auxiliary one, that's for an effects channel, and I'll explain that at another time. Uh, because that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a cool effect to add a little reverb to somebody or echo to a vocalist. But that's going to probably be one of the last uh, vi videos I do because a lot of people go ape. They go overkill on that, and it's like, no. It's just like salt and pepper. You don't dump a bunch of salt on two eggs on your plate. You just put a little bit of salt or a little bit of pepper, and the same thing goes with effects. That's another video another time. Anyway, let's go ahead and move over to 
point out where those, uh, those uh, monitor ports are. Then I discovered the comments. We don't have to spend. No, okay. It's pretty strong back there. Actually, at first, Notice where I have this right now, and I can hear it from over here. In actuality, it'd probably it'd be like about that. But until we get over there and change the gain stage over there, because those self-powered monitors, the Wharfdales, uh, pretty touchy. So you need to probably put it down closer to just a one. I probably left it on two or three. And that's the reason why it's really loud without having to turn it up very much. We want to have our gain. We want to be able to do all our work back here. So like if if I have the gain stage set correctly or in a preferred uh, manner, I should be able to make all my adjustments within one dial's area. Instead of like, well, I can barely hear it, and then all of a sudden you just, and all of a sudden you just barely touch it. Oh, it's blazing loud. Well, that's because our gain stage up there has turned, has really opened up, and so therefore it's just magnifying that input signal too much. So we want to be able to have a lot of sway in terms of how loud we want. So I'm going to leave that at 5, just on auxiliary 5, just barely up for the time being. Let's go over there and take a look. Let's take a look at a couple things. What the heck? Alright, here's a side view of one of the Wharfdale uh, self-powered monitors. Let me just explain what we got here. This is self power, it's got its own amplifier built in, dead giveaway. You got all these cooling fins right here. Uh, plus, it requires you to go ahead and put AC on it. Let me turn my headlamp back on again just so we can uh, make sure that we're able to, this comes through on the video. Probably it does already, but what the heck. All right. Now, we have balanced line inputs. We can, this is what's known as a pass-through, so you can plug into any one of these ports, balanced ports, with a microphone cable. This one right here is actually a dual purpose. You can actually put a quarter-inch TSR, not an unbalanced, which is tip sleeve, but the TSR, remember those are tip, ring, and sleeve. There's three little sections on that quarter-inch uh, jack. This will take a balanced quarter-inch as well. That's why it kind of looks a little different from the other uh, typical females that you have, female uh, XLRs. And of course, so you plug it in using a, a standard computer type uh, power cord. Don't turn the power on yet. Uh, you can actually uh, control some of the graphics here with this, with this uh, five band, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five band EQ. But best to do that, do everything up front there uh, because we do have a, a 15 band graphic EQ uh, that the uh, signal passes through before it comes out here uh, to either one of these, any of the monitors you have there, you have two of them. And notice I've got the input gain set just at one. Don't want to turn it up way up here because once again, you won't have that much control over the signal uh, back of the board. Always put it down right at one. That's completely off. Put it right at one and just leave it there. If you see that somebody's messed with it, put it back at one. If they argue, tell them I said put it at one. And then once you've got everything plugged in, you can turn the power on. Now, of course, I don't have this plugged in. That's the reason why it's not doing anything. Turn the power on at that point. And that's going to be like your standard floor wedge monitor. And this is a, these are nice uh, monitors. This is a, a 12 and a horn which is ample for, uh, for most uh, close proximity uh, uh, work that, uh, that you would be doing. And of course, let's look at the uh, overhead monitor also. If you're standing around the pulpit or the front of the stage area, you will see, let me see if I get my finger in there, there it is, that white box right there, that's your overhead monitor, and that's auxiliary six. Auxiliary six, the mix that you put through the, to the master auxiliary six channel uh, output on the board will show up it, the signal is fed to a processor and then it goes down to the amplifier that powers that particular, I lost my finger, where's my finger, there's my finger, that powers, and I still lost my finger, there it is, there it is, uh, that powers that speaker right there. Remember that's auxiliary six. Now let's go over to the praise team choir area. All right, here we have the other wedge, it's in the back, which is where we're standing at right now. What I did is, 
is we are plugged into channel eight. If anybody mistakenly for the time being plugs a microphone into channel eight, you will suddenly hear sound coming out of the microphone. That's not right. In fact, there's a good chance you'll, you're damaging that microphone when you do that. So make sure nobody for the meantime, nobody plugs in the channel eight except for the monitor. So we're running a mic cable over to the monitor. So anyway, I've got the mic cable coming over and I'm gonna turn the speaker on the side and I'm gonna, since this is a female, this is a female, I'm gonna plug it into the male. If I happen to have a male, I'll just plug it into the uni, which does both male and female. So I'm gonna plug it into the male because, uh, yeah. Normally we would use a male, but we're using a microphone jack and I made a modification over there to use a microphone jack for the time being. So normally this would be the other way around, but we're using a female to go into a male because usually our signals, signals from a male go to signals to feed signals into a female, typically 95%, 99% of the time. This is one of those occasions where we're doing it the other way around. If you wanted to use both of these uh, wedges back here, you could then take another mic cable and plug it in here and jump it over to the other wedge. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. And once again, make sure your uh, EQ, your five band EQ is straight. It's just flat right in the middle. People will tend to play around with them and it's because they don't know what they do and therefore and that's the reason why they play with them. They don't know what they're doing and that's a problem. But I always make sure that's down and make sure this is just on number one because you could actually turn it all the way up, that'd be too loud. Let's go, just put it on number one. Let's turn power on. Give it a second. Trust a word that's come from this See, reality that. that you've said it's so loud. Want. You have a sense of it. But then the conviction that this reality has spoken through a great religious tradition and you respond with trust. Now that's faith and that opens up a whole different side of it. Right, so you know, it's like this is helpful to me because yeah. getting ready for the interview. Okay, now problems you will encounter with floor wedge monitors is proximity because people, the closer they want to place their microphone to the wedge, the more of a chance or they have increased the chance of feedback. And that's a totally different video later on. I can't really go into a lot of detail about that right on the spot, but. Let's just say, suffice to say, from this distance back at the rail, if you put the, the uh, speaker there, that you want to put it back probably like right about this location. Because the further back people stand from the, mic, the speaker, the more they can be off to the side and still get the same experience of sound from it. The closer you are, the more narrow that field of sound is. Let me turn this back so I can see. Yeah, hopefully that all worked. Yeah, the closer you are, the more narrow the sound. The further you are, at least you get a more of a broad sound. So stand back behind the rail with a couple of microphones. Uh, you should get some reasonably good, um, uh, reasonably good monitor signal from them without feedback. But if you get feedback, and usually you can hear the little ghost start to creep in uh, as you turn up the uh, gain on auxiliary five for them, um, you gotta back it off or adjust the EQ, the graphic EQ, or the channel EQ. And there's different ways of doing this, but I'm not gonna go into that in this particular uh, video. Suffice to say that if they feed back, it's probably because they're too close to it. So either they back away from the, the speaker or turn auxiliary five, or in the case of auxiliary six, or the speaker overhead, turn it down just a little bit on that particular channel. Okay, hope this helps. In the meantime, just as a recap, of course, if you look up front, hopefully we can, you can hear, see this. I don't know. Light really, it's not that good. But up front we have, of course, channels one, two, and three, and four. But each channel here, in this case, hopefully you're able to see this, uh, even with my bad light. 
Channel 2, of course, is feeding the lectern microphone. Channel 1 is open, and looks like somebody's already stepped on this again since I repaired it last. Somebody needs to put the thing over, or I'm going to have to build it for you. But you'll notice, of course, here is a female. Both of these are females, and here's your male. Like, once again, typically, uh, the males send a signal to the females. So these are proper, but, you know, we can turn them around. With those particular monitors, you're able to actually turn around the other way. Uh, but when I install another monitor uh, port back there, it will be a male. But typically your male ports are sending a signal, in this case, monitor two, uh, whereas monitor one is the uh, auxiliary six, fed by auxiliary six, uh, and supplies sound for the overhead speaker, the white one I pointed out earlier. All right, hope that helps.